Thank you, Greg. <clears throat> so it was a dark and stormy afternoon. And I've wanted to use that line for years, so thank you very much. So 5.30 in the afternoon on, August, on an August evening, August afternoon, excuse me, and the rain was pouring down. The cloud level was low. At 5.07 that evening, I'd gotten an email from Dean Withers in which he said, ah, looks like the weather isn't going to allow this to happen. I'm so sorry. It was a great project. And he was right. It was a great project, and what a shame if we had not been able to go forward with the celebration that we had scheduled for that night. So I teach in the, in the arts management program here at CSU, and I've got a number of classes that I teach, law and the arts, and my favorite class to teach, which is community engagement in the arts, which aligns nicely with the theme here this afternoon. And uh, so um, let me give you a little bit of flavor and a story around this project. So we had engaged and developed a mural making project that was focused on working with a community and really embodying what the heart and soul of our program is which is how do you use the arts to transform communities, to transform, to transform organizations? So this summer, my class, Community Engagement in the Arts, had a number of students that had come in from around the country, and we engaged in a mural making project. These were the three steps involved. It started last spring. I had to meet with about a gazillion different community organizations and university committees to get approvals on this. And it really started with community partnerships. Again, we're talking a consistent theme here, aren't we? So our partners, the city of Fort Collins, I wish we had some of the, some representatives here from the city, but there's also the CSU Housing and Dining Group that were instrumental in this. There was CSU Marketing and Communications, Maggie and Hannah are here today, thank you very much guys. Neighborhood leadership, we knew that we needed to work with the people who manage the different residence halls, residence communities in the immediate area. And coming back to the city of Fort Collins, they had helped us identify areas within the city that needed love, that needed attention, that needed this kind of activity. Also, I can't forget Armando Silva, the artist, what an extraordinary guy, what an extraordinary artist, and really remarkable in his ability to work with the community and engage the community, which is what we were all about. So, we started, oh, I can't forget my students. Oh, man. So when the students came in this summer, each of them took responsibility for a particular area of the project. We had one who said, okay, I'm going to own logistics and materials. We had another who said, okay, I'm going to own volunteer management, which turned into a huge job. Had another who decided that she would own and act as the communications liaison, making certain that everybody who was involved in the project knew what was going on, knew what was expected, knew how things needed to come together. And then as a team, they focused all on the community engagement piece of this. So we started, again, with community partnerships. And this was the most important piece of the project. The mural couldn't happen without this. So, we went into the community, we gathered a bunch of, a number of different residents, people who were uh, represented the various constituencies for the project, and we asked, what do you want this mural to say about you? What do you want it to say about your neighborhood? What do you want it to say about the community? What do you want it to say about your families? What do you want it to say about your aspirations for why you're here in Fort Collins and a part of CSU? From there, we had two weeks to confirm the final design and the painting plan. Armando did a great job taking everything on board that was given to us during the community engagement or the community meeting process and came back to us with five different potential designs. This is the one we settled on. We decided on this one for a number of reasons. I hope it's obvious that it's a fabulous design. It's a brilliant concept. But the things we really loved about this were the fact that Lots of great color. It would fill that 70-foot wall on the Housing and Dining Services office building beautifully. And it spoke to what we thought was central to this project. This is called intersection. And it's really about the intersections that we experience here at CSU, the intersections we experience in the neighborhood, the intersections with different ideas that we explore and that we experience as part of this community. And we really, really loved that it included ASL, American Sign Language, we felt that spoke brilliantly to the core of this, which is about diversity 
and the range of experience that's represented by, the, by these communities. So we started painting. It took us nine days to finish the project. The very first day, we laid down what's called a doodle grid. So we doodled all over the wall. We uh, laid, graffiti, laid down graffiti. We did a laid down a variety of images. And then that gave us something that we could use photographically and digitally so we could then take photographs of each of the volunteers' hands in making the various letter forms. And then we could accurately transform those letter forms onto the wall. So every one of those hands is the hand of one of our volunteers. Which is really a nice bit, I think. Painting, what an experience. So great for the, for the, uh, for the students. And we had over 100 volunteers, many of whom came to back day after day. We had a fifth grader who decided she was going to own a hand. And she was there for five straight days working on the hand. And she did it fabulously. I'll show, you to, show it to you here in just a sec. Um, and again, over 100 volunteers, uh, so much energy. Oh, and there's the tilt team. You may recognize them here, the, here this afternoon as well. CSU Public Safety came and joined us. And the energy was fabulous. Again, mute, talking about music, Lindsay. So we had people singing, we had people dancing. You see people coming out of their homes and coming in to participate with us when they heard the music and heard what we were doing. And then we were done. So the last day, I was up on the, uh, the scaffold with Armando or I just climbed up there, it was about seven o'clock in the morning. And I look across the street and here's an older woman who's standing there with her phone and she's taking a picture of the wall. And I got down, I ran across the street because by that I'd made a point of trying to introduce myself to everybody so I could help tell the story about this project. Name was Gloria. And she said, I've been taking pictures every morning and I send them to my family all over the country so that they can see the progress. And I love this. Can you tell me what it means? I said, okay, I'll tell you what it means, but you got to tell me first what it means to you. She said, I think it's about people all over the world. And they're all different colors, and they're all from different backgrounds. And they're all participating to communicate, to tell us a story. I said, Gloria, I can't do any better than that. <laughs> <laughs> then I told her what it translated to, intersection. So about 15 minutes later, I'm up on the scaffold, and I can see out of the corner of my eye, here comes a young woman on a skateboard, and she's booking down the street, and she screeches to a halt right in front of the mural. She looks Armando in the eye, and then she looks me in the eye, and she yells at the top of her lungs, this wall is cool as fuck! I'll let you, uh, you, can, you can add the final consonant if you like, okay? So what an interesting story that illustrates generational resonance and how this connects across different age groups. All right. So here I was in the car. It was raining. It was pouring. I'd had the message from Dean Withers. I replied to the message by saying, I'm not giving up. I'm, try I'm even using the force. I'm trying to drive these damn clouds away. Well, at 545, I can see a little patch of blue to the west. And at 550, the patch of blue has come over, over above us. And then it's turned into a sun shower. And by 558, and I looked at my watch, because I figured it was worth noting, the rain stopped. I stepped out of my car into about eight inches of water that was in, in, in the parking lot. That all drained and that was fine. Everybody else who was part of the community, Bridget, came out of their cars. We were getting ready to cook. And thanks so much to the city, they provided the food, they provided the lemonade, they provided support, they provided the awnings, as well as lots of other things, including the band. So people came out. People we'd invited came and joined us. And what really got us cooking was this. Their doors opened, people streamed out. What an incredibly great time. And I've been, I've, been, I've been practicing this move all week, and it's not very good. My wife looks at me like, what are you doing? But the dogs think, think it's great. So we had over 200 people who came and joined us, literally dancing in the street. 
I love this photo. This is Eduardo, who's a postdoc candidate here at CSU, and this is his wife, and I love this image with their hands holding that echoes the image behind. So we were done, right? Not quite. Two weeks later, I get an email from the CSU ASL club, and they've asked if they can meet on the site of the mural and asked if I would join them and tell the story about how the mural came to be, what it means to the community, and what it means to me. So I joined them on a, on a September evening, wonderful group of people. They asked some questions. I stopped them, and I said, before we get too deep into this, I want you to tell me what this mural means to you. And they said things like, well, we love the color. It's so dynamic and it fits the community beautifully. We love that it represents diversity. And then one young woman stepped forward and she said, this mural tells us that we belong. I said, I can't do any better than that. I think that's cool as you can finish it however you'd like. Thank you very much.